wherever you get it from, you've got some nice flaky white fish and you want to make the best fish and chips you've ever tasted. Let's go ahead and get started. Watch till the end of the video and you can see where we caught these black sea bass off the coast of Virginia. But you may have your own fillets that you want to use. You don't have to use fresh fish that you caught. You can use fish that you purchased from the store as well. We'll also start out with a juicy tip here. Put a wet towel underneath your cutting board and instead of struggling with your board sliding all over the table, it'll stick right to the counter. Another juicy tip here, soak your fries in water. This fry cutter is a fantastic tool and we'll put links to the equipment and tools that we use down in the description of the video, but soak your fries for at least one hour in water and you'll find that you'll get a crispier product on the other end. If you look at the water in this point, look at that cloudiness. That is the starch leaving the potatoes. That helps with the crispiness. Start with all your dry ingredients first because when you get them all into your bowl, you'll mix those in, fluff up the flour. That fluffiness will transfer over to your batter and it's just easier to mix your dry ingredients rather than in with all the, the wet ingredients at the same time. If you look down below in the description, the recipe will be in there as well as the tools and equipment that we use in this video will all be down below in the description. We like to use a secret ingredient. You can taste it in there and that's honey. Many people wonder why their batters never get that golden brown color. While our secret ingredient is our homemade honey, you can do the same thing with sugar in your recipe. If you have any interest, you can check out our other videos where we do the honey harvest, as well as starting up hives. I like to use cheap beer. Lots of strong flavor in that cheap beer. When you're doing your mix here, don't mix it too well. Leave it a bit lumpy. You want it kind of a thick consistency, maybe a little thicker than you would think, so it sticks to the fish. We're gonna be heating up our cast iron and oil on this induction glass cooktop. Some people get nervous about using their cast iron on their glass cooktop, so we ordered this to demonstrate to you that you can put this directly on your induction cooktop and it'll never mar the surface. It's designed to sit between the hot plate and the glass cooktop. You'll want to set that temperature somewhere around 380 degrees. I wish this would run just a little hotter on a setting, but it's good enough. And if you take a look at these fries, you'll see them starting to curl up. They're taking on that moisture. I told you that's the critical step to getting good crispy fries. After those fries have soaked, you're gonna wanna get them good and dry. You don't want your oil bubbling over. So sometimes I even take a paper towel to them to get some of that moisture off. And if you wanted to be a true traditionalist and get the ultimate crispy fries, you'd boil them first, then dry them off and put them in the fridge before you fry them. Test your oil, put a little bit of a dollop of batter in, see how it cooks up, and if you like the speed that it cooks and the goldness that you achieve. It's very important when you're frying fish that you get that fish as dry as you possibly can. Almost press the moisture out of it. You'll get a crispier and better cook out of it. Do a little bit of dusting across your fillets. It helps the batter stick and pulls more of that moisture out. Now let's get down to business. You're gonna dredge that fillet in that thick batter. You'll, you'll see here, you'll get a sense of how thick that is and kind of lumpy and you want it to cover all the surfaces. Keep that batter thick and lumpy. You get a, a, a better sticky batter that, that coats on the fish. Use a fork because if you try and pick that up with your finger, you'll put holes in that batter. And that will run all the way through to the meat and you don't want that. You want it fully encapsulated in that golden batter. Remember, keep good control of that piece of fish and lower it away from yourself. Here's another little tip. 
pause as you lower it in, especially if you're using a fryer with the basket. It'll give that batter a chance to set a little and it won't immediately sink to the bottom, make a mess and stick. Of course, you can use traditional codfish. We've got this sea bass that we caught fresh out on the wrecks off of Virginia Beach. Any white fish, I've seen this done with catfish too. In just a second, pay attention to the sound you hear. That's when the moisture is leaving the fish. When you hear that change in the sound, that's telling you that it's just about done. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 Today's gonna be a good day. Sprinkle your taste of kosher coarse salt on your fries. Don't forget to watch until the end where you can see where we caught these sea bass as well as a first underwater look at the base of the windmills off of Virginia Beach. They're starting to hold fish. And it's not just the fish. It's the fries too, or chips if you prefer. Mm. Just a delicious meal. A lot of people don't realize how close you get to the other boats when you're all sitting on the wreck. We'll watch this again in slow motion. He ran me right across the wreck and cut my line. So this is kind of new for the fishery off the shore of Virginia Beach and that's the windmills. They're starting to hold fish and this is the first video that I've seen that covers what's actually happening now down at the base of those windmills. Right, fish off the windmill. When we look at the sonar, you can see some pretty decent marks right up off the bottom. The, that green haze above is the fish holding the structure. This is some underwater footage of the windmills and the rocks right at the base. We've got to watch that again in slow motion. Mm -hmm. One 
feels pretty good. <laughs> So YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits. This is my latest upload, and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more.